guys, welcome back to the channel. So as I'm sure you're aware, the WAP for 2019 is currently scheduled for 13th of September. And I have been asked by a few people to put together a video on how to prepare for the WAP, some study tips and advice. I've been a little bit tentative to do the video because how I prepared for the WAP is pretty much the exact opposite of how anybody should prepare for the test. So I approached a few people at Varsity, some friends of mine, um, and asked them to be involved in the video. And so Jan and Mishka are both friends of mine in my GAMP1 class and they've graciously agreed to give their tips and advice. And then Simon is a GAMP2 student. He wrote the WAFT in 2017, same year as I did, and he got in a year before me. So he's also agreed to give his tips and advice in the video. Simon has also been running a group for the last two years where they give tutorials for the WAFT. Uh, for each of the sections, so the anatomy, physiology, and molecular medicine sections, and then they also run sort of like mock exams, mock WAPT exams towards the end of those tutorials so that you can kind of gauge where you are uh, with your studying, give you some ideas of how the questions will be in that. So I strongly recommend uh, joining up to his group if you can, if you're in the Joburg area, if you can travel through to Wits, attend those sessions, I think they'll be very helpful. So before I get into giving my two cents worth of tips and advice for the exam, some more information on that tutorial group that Simon is running. There is currently a WhatsApp group that you can join which has a lot of information that will be posted on there regarding the tutorials, when the dates will be, uh, what to prepare, that kind of thing. Um, I will leave a link in the description below which you can click on if you have WhatsApp, you can join that group and then uh, just keep that active and you'll be able to see any um, updates regarding tutorial sessions. So I strongly advise using that link. I do think there is a limit of about 250 odd people that can join a WhatsApp group. If that group reaches that cap, I'll create another group um, and link that in the description as below. So if you can't join that, if it says the cap is reached, uh, we will create another group and just join to that group then as well. And we'll post the same information across both groups. If you don't have WhatsApp and you can't actually join those groups, uh, Simon has created a lot of Dropbox links which contain summaries and study tips and advice and all the objectives and all that as well. So I will post those links in the description below so you can always just access that in the meantime. It does have some summaries and tips and that that you can follow which is also very helpful and I strongly recommend using those as well. I will also link the current schedule for the tutorials below in the description as well so you can access that. I think we start beginning of June. Uh, there will be a general kind of information session first where you can attend that, you can ask general questions, there'll be, all the tutors will be there, uh, I think I'll probably be there as well. You can just ask us general questions about the WAPT, about people's journeys, any questions that you have regarding the test, you can just ask on that session before we actually get into the material, the, probably the week after that and start covering uh, the different topics. And then finally, we will also be creating a playlist which I'll add to this channel. That'll be a playlist of videos which can kind of supplement your studying. So a lot of the videos will follow the teachings of Elaine Marib and Hun. I think that's how you say it. For the anatomy and physiology textbook, which is the prescribed reading for the WAPT. So if it's not posted by the time this video goes up, it will definitely be posted within the next day or two. So this is going to be quite a long video, so I'll try and keep my sections as short as possible because there is some valuable information from Simon, Mishka and Yan. So uh, if you do have the time, please watch till the end. Uh, they do give some good advice. My own preparations for the WAPT were horrendous, to say the least. I was working full-time at a stock trading company um, during that year. Uh, I had two positions. I was an IT manager and an office manager. I was pretty much on call, so to speak, for most of the day, so it was non-stop, very stressful. And as much as I wanted to get into medicine, uh, I had to work. So that took up a lot of my time and by the time I got home I was very tired and I ended up doing nothing. So I took off two weeks before the WAPT. So I left myself two weeks essentially to study everything and it was not enough time. How I got through that I don't know. Um, I put myself through hell those two weeks and that's why I say uh, it's the exact opposite way to actually prepare for this exam. So I have a few general tips. Uh, for preparing for this test and I think number one and probably most important is remember why you're doing this it's easy to get discouraged by the amount of work that you have to get through it seems unending it's very stressful I'm sure most of you are working or studying at the same time so you still got to do that and then come home and, and study extra so if you're along this path you've decided for a specific reason to try and get into medicine that means you have your own passions and your own dreams to get into medicine and become a doctor so hold on to that 
and always keep that at the back of your mind when you feel like giving up on the work. Remember why you're doing this in the first place. It'll give you that little bit of extra encouragement and determination to get through all the sections that you need to get through for this exam. So always remember that. That's what helped me a lot um, and I'm sure it'll help you as well. Uh, number two, find out what works best for you. So I've been asked to do a lot of videos on how I study and what's the best way to study and I don't think there is a single best way to study. Um, I'm still adapting my study techniques even till this day. First block I was writing a lot of uh, summaries and notes. This block I did absolutely none of that. So find what works for you for the material that you are currently trying to cover. Mishka will talk about um, a kind of space repetition learning technique that she uses and Simon on the other hand talks about a technique that he uses where you kind of comp compartmentalize your your studying period so you only study for about 20-25 minutes and you take a break so that works best for him um, for Mishka maybe the space repetition works better <clears throat> for me personally studying for the WAT I supplemented my um, studying with a lot of videos from YouTube which is why we're creating this playlist because it certainly helped me and I know it helped a lot of other people we are currently doing hematology and uh, our course coordinator started off with a very interesting tip saying that facts without context are pretty much meaningless and I think that applies when studying for the WAPS because there are a ton of objectives and uh, if you don't have context in which they are asked it's kind of impossible to remember everything and to understand what they're asking so uh, that's why I suggested using some videos to supplement your, your learning to put everything into context if you have the time perhaps read more of the chapter to put that section into context as well it'll, it'll help you remember everything that you need to number three uh, I would say find a study area this again is very dependent on uh, each individual personally I cannot study at home I get distracted very quickly so uh, I would generally go and study at a library or even at a little coffee shop or something like that to get away from all the distractions at home because there's TV uh, I play guitar and bass I'll never to be end up picking up one of those and messing around so find a place that you are comfortable studying that will not distract you that will make you feel like you can get through the work and uh, and stick to that a lot of people like to study at home they feel they can be very productive so again find a study area that is good for you and that you know that you will be productive and will have minimal distractions number four and this directly links into what I was saying about my experiences don't leave it late uh, now is a good time to start, May, June, June at the latest I would say, start going through that material. It is, a, it is an insane amount of material to get through. Uh, you want to get through it a couple times at least so that you can go through it once, try and understand it, go through it twice and try and remember it. So don't leave it late, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot and you'll be very stressed and very uncomfortable on the test day. Number five, this is something that I still use uh, now in medicine, is make a study plan. I like making lists because it, it helps to make a plan for the day, for the week and for the month. So you have a short term plan, what I want to get through today. You have a, a medium term plan, what I want to get through this week. And then a kind of longer term plan, what I want to get through by the end of this month. And it helps to keep track of your progress and uh, it, it helps to kind of motivate you as well because every time you tick off one of those things you feel like you're actually accomplishing something. I also find it gives me a lot of motivation to get through the day because my day is organized, it's structured. I know that I have five topics that I need to get through today, for instance, and uh, tomorrow I have another five. So I know it's not just opening up a textbook and saying, okay, well, I'm going to try and do as much as I can today. That's very disorganized, and I think it adds to the pressure because you don't feel like you're getting through it enough. If you have it planned out, uh, you know, okay, by the end of this week, I will know these three chapters of the Marib textbook. Or these 10 objectives that have been laid out for the anatomy section so I, I would recommend making lists and making a study plan number six follow the objectives there are a ton of objectives and it's very easy to get uh, lost in all the information that that you need to learn the textbook is massive it's a very a very good textbook I love it I still use it today as well um, it's got everything that you need in that textbook but try and stick to the objectives now I know I said that you need some context to put all those facts in place and yes you do so maybe read the beginning of the chapter leading up to the objective that they ask for instance but you don't have to read the entire textbook it's, it's just it's impossible you will not remember everything so stick to the objectives they ask directly from those objectives I know in my year they did that 
Um, so if you go through those objectives and you know the objectives well, you should be okay. Number seven, and probably the biggest mistake I made on that day is do not neglect molecular medicine. Molecular medicine is the smallest section, so it's kind of easy to put it off to last because you think, I need to get through so much anatomy, I need to get through so much physiology, molecular medicine, it's short and easy, I'll get through that. That is a big mistake. Uh, you need to pass every section. So if you leave molecular medicine to last, you're gonna be shooting yourself in the foot again because you need to pass it. I left it for the day before. Uh, so I went through all of the objectives in one day and that was just, it was a nightmare. So prepare molecular medicine, even do it first, get it out of the way. Uh, it's probably a good idea to do that because it's a short section and if you can get that, you know that you've already done one section, 50% you got, you just need to focus on physiology and anatomy. Number eight, don't be discouraged by others. And I say this because on the day that you write the WEFT, you will walk into the test venue and you will see literally thousands of people. It's very easy to get discouraged in that moment to think, okay, well, there's only, whatever, 100 places available for graduate students this year and there are 2,000 people writing their test. Uh, don't let that get to you. Linking to my first tip, remember why you're doing this. Don't focus on what other people are talking about and don't get caught up in the, have you studied this and have you prepared this and what do you think it's gonna be like and all that. Keep your mind focused. Remember that you've done the best you can, that you've gotten this far, that means you've met all the minimum requirements. Uh, you're just that one extra step away from getting your place into medicine. So don't get discouraged when you see the number of people and don't get discouraged when you hear them talking about the degrees that they have or the marks that they've gotten or how much they've studied for the test. Be you, remember why you're here, remember how you got here, and you should be good. So those are just my kind of general tips for the WEPT. Uh, Simon will be first, he'll give you his ideas, then Mishka and Yan. I hope you watch till the end of the video, there is some good information here. Uh, if you have any comments for any of us, just write them down in, in the comment section below and uh, we will respond to them. Join that WhatsApp group. Use those uh, Dropbox links, get the summaries and material there. Use the playlist to supplement your education and you should be good. Hi everyone, my name is Simon. I'm 34 and I'm in GEMP 2 at WITS. I wrote the WAPT in 2017 and started in GEMP in 2018. Medicine was always a dream for me and I was part of a first aid squad at school, I did community service hours and I did everything I thought necessary to get in but I didn't have the opportunity to do medicine. So instead I did a bachelor's of science degree and my majors were in anatomy and physiology and towards the end of that degree I actually felt like life was taking me down a different path and I started working at church and eventually went into full time ministry at church where I was for 10 years, uh, I got another degree, I got married, we had some kids. Um, not a degree and I, but uh, my wife and I. And in 2016, actually, life brought me full circle and the opportunity came up to study medicine again. A very generous sponsor suggested that I, I do medicine and they would support my family and, and help to pay the way. Um, and that was fantastic. So if you do have the opportunity to study medicine, really consider if it's for you. And if it is, go for it. Don't let anything hold you back. Um, I want to encourage people that on the other side of writing the WAPT is another four years of study. If you get into the graduate entry to medicine, you are going to be a full-time medical student and you need to consider, do you have the finances? Does your family uh, support you all the way in terms of, um, you know, will you have time for your wife or, or, or husband or your kids? Uh, are you going to be working while you're studying? Some people are working full-time while studying medicine and it's tough, but they can do it. But will your work allow you that freedom and that opportunity because there's some um, practicals and compulsions that you're going to have to be a part of so if that is something that you've already settled and you're preparing for the wrapped great um, in terms of actually preparing for the test which is in september i started studying in may which in hindsight was probably a little bit late but studying from december the year before is not necessarily going to give you an advantage because you still need to have that that um, memory of all the work you need to know it all and it needs to be fresh so if you studied it in December and January and you don't look at it again chances are you're not going to remember it as well 
as if you've been repetitive and you've been consistent and you've just been working hard for four months before. So if you're starting in April, May, June, I think that's great. Uh, July and August are probably a little bit late unless you have some advanced knowledge of the material. Uh, but yeah, just work hard and, and go for it. The technique that I used in studying was called the Pomodoro Technique. I found it online and it really, really helped me. Um, I find that I can concentrate for 20 to 25 minutes at a time. So what the Pomodoro Technique allowed me to do was to set a timer for 20 minutes um, or, or 25 minutes if I was really pushing. Um, and after those 20 minutes, the alarm would go off. And it would usually be about the time that my mind would start to wonder. And then I'd have five minutes where I would just be able to do whatever I wanted. And five minutes is enough to you know, go downstairs, get a drink of water, uh, scroll through Instagram, um, take a little walk outside, just do something to get away from your books. Just get out of your chair and just move away from there for five minutes. But then when the five minutes is up, to sit down again and start another 25 minute block uh, or 20 minute block. And I would do that for four cycles. So I would do two hours of studying at a time. And then at the end of that two hours, having done four cycles, I'd take a half hour break. That would allow me time to maybe have a meal, uh, watch an episode of something on TV, take a nap, uh, phone a friend, anything. But just to have a mental break away from that work. But being regular and consistent like that really helps you to knock down a lot of the objectives and get a lot done. And it also means that you can put away distractions for 15 minutes because there's very few things that are urgent uh, in the next 15 minutes. Um, if a friend messages you or phones you, you're able to say, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that when my 20 minute block is done. You know, they can just wait 10 minutes or five minutes or however long is left in the 20 minute break. Uh, even if you have the, the massive urge to go to the toilet, usually uh, it falls into your, your break as you push away from the desk or uh, if it is while you're studying, you can say to yourself, you know what, just five minutes more and then I can, can go to the loop. Um, so yeah, so do that um, and do something every single day. Don't let a single day go by. People procrastinate waiting for the time that they have four hours set aside to study. Um, that four hours will never come. Um, so if you can just grab half an hour in the morning, half an hour in, in the evening, that's great. That's fantastic. Um, and also you're going to have to make some sacrifices. So if you're binge watching on Netflix instead of studying, um, good luck to you, but I don't think you're going to pass the way out. Um, I also found that I made some notes and summaries, but they were pathetic and not colorful and not creative any anyway, because you're not going to have much time to go through your summaries again later on. So don't worry about making beautiful works of art that other people are going to rave about. You're studying for you. Uh, so I wouldn't even worry about writing summaries because we've prepared a, 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 a whole bunch of summaries for you already. Uh, worry about understanding the work. Worry, worry about are you getting the concepts? And if something is really tricky, leave it and come back to it. Because if you if you're stuck on something for six hours, you're neglecting time that you could be studying uh, other things, which probably have a better chance of coming up. Because there's so much work that any one particular subject or any one particular objective has very little um, chance of being in the actual wet. But you do need to have an integrated. Uh, approach and understanding of all the work. I didn't use any of the blue histology notes uh, that Bits recommends. I just didn't have time to get to them. I also didn't use any other textbooks than what textbooks than what was recommended. I didn't use my BSc notes because sometimes you're studying a degree that's got similar content, but you need to understand the WAPT is not testing what degree you're doing now. It's doing the objectives that Bits lists on the website. So work closely to those objectives. If they say read up to page 17, don't read 18, 19, 20 because you don't need it. Um, then I found that studying alone was better than studying in groups. When I tried to study with other people, it just became too much of a social thing. Um, and this was for me. It wasn't about getting in with a bunch of buddies. It was about me getting in. And in the end, that worked. Um, we want to prepare for the, the WAPT as best we can. So I had the opportunity to my, write a mock WAPT, a mock WAPT exam in June. And it showed me flames. And it really showed me how hard I would need to prepare to work hard for the to, to pass the WAPT. And we've created a WhatsApp group that is gonna to work towards a mock WAPT in August. Um, and if you join that WhatsApp group, you'll find on there that there's links to a Dropbox folder with tons of summaries for you to, um, to read. I would recommend that you work through the textbook and work through the notes first yourself, and then read through the summaries um, as just like a repetition reminder and to integrate all the knowledge. But it just saves you that time of sitting down and writing your own summaries. Uh, there's also going to be loads of YouTube videos to go through on the different topics and playlists that you can, can watch. 
um, and that WhatsApp group is regularly updated with tips, motivation, practice questions, and also help with tough sections you might come across. Um, a great bunch of GIMP ones from 2019. Uh, so these are people that wrote the WAPs in 2018. Um, have also pledged to help teach at some tutorial sessions on Fridays and Saturdays. I'm really excited about that because it gives you an opportunity to test your, your knowledge and um, also just, again, repetition, integration. So on Fridays and Saturdays, we're going to be ha having these tutorial sessions. I understand that those times don't work for everyone um, and my heart goes out to the people who can't make those times. But we had to accommodate the times for tutors as well as medical school and Fridays and Saturdays just seems to be the best because you know people who work during the week will then have Saturdays free um, or maybe people who don't have Saturdays at least at Fridays afternoons because Fridays are quieter at, at bits. So if you can make those tutorials, they're free of charge and there might be a minimal charge at times just to cover our printing costs, for example, when you write the mock wrapped, but do avail yourself of those uh, opportunities. You can find a full schedule on the WhatsApp group um, or on the link below. And um, yeah, you don't need to do those tutorials, by the way. Um, you're not going to miss out anything if you if you miss a tutorial. But it's just to give you an extra opportunity to to study and prepare for the web. So yeah, that's it from me, guys. Hopefully that's encouraging, um, helpful. And I just want to say to you, be blessed, study hard, and trust God with the rest. everyone so my name is Mishka Raja I am a third year medical student at the moment and I wrote the WAP so I wrote the WAP last year when I was doing my third year for my BSc at VIPS my majors were physiology and apes or animal plants and environmental studies for long so basically what I found was that I had to spend a lot more time on my degree because there was a lot more that been that was needed as well as because it was it was my third year so we we're doing a lot of research papers and stuff like that. The WAPT is MCQs and it's like questions that are like very similar but you basically have to figure out which one's the right one. Um, I found that studying for the things that I was strong at was a better idea. So because I did physiology before, um, it made it easier for me to actually kind of cut out physiology until right at the end and then just study for anatomy and molecular medicine. What I found was studying from the objectives is the best and most important thing. Don't try and study extra stuff because you're probably not going to have time. Um, if you do have the time, go ahead and like, I'm not telling you not to learn, but if you really want to just, you know, get through the stressful period, rather just study the objectives, they ask from the objectives. The, I found the textbook really helpful, the one that they tell you, um, I can't remember the name of it, but that textbook that they give you on the website uh, with the objectives and stuff, I found that really helpful. I actually have the textbook and I'm still using it today because there are times where I'm just like, I don't remember this stuff and like I studied, not, I studied it not even like six months ago but anyway um, yeah so it is a good buy if you can get the PDF version do it if you can get the free version do it just use it it's a good it's a good um, supplementary textbook to have especially when you can't remember your anatomy or your physiology for that matter so how I studied was I basically um, took little flashcards and I wrote the questions in the front and the answers at the back. So for example, um, what are the major characteristics of a red blood cell? And at the back I put a biconcave disc, it has no nucleus, it has hemoglobin, um, and it has like a pale middle and then a, a red outside. And that was basically what, what, was, what was at the back. And that's basically a test that you can do um, to see you, uh, if you know your stuff and uh, you, you, you can go through them over and over and over again and you're basically continuously testing yourself over and over and over again and the nice thing is that on, um, on like your devices and stuff you can get a, um, a thing called Anki Anki is like a flashcard, an electronic flashcard like service I guess I think on the tablets like the Apple stuff it's, um, you have to pay for it 
respect for um, like laptops and Microsoft, no, Microsoft, Microsoft and all of that stuff. It's, it's for free. I also made flashcards on there because there were some pictures that I didn't really want to print out and I was able to put them onto Anki and then you can take that anywhere. You can download it on your phone and if you're sitting at a doctor's appointment or if you're uh, at a family function and it's really boring, you can sit and actually study while you're on the move basically. My advice to you is keep healthy, eat healthy, gym go out be sociable because speaking from experience you're not going to have that when you get to med school you're going to try but it's going to be really difficult so make sure you, you you keep up to date and you keep yourself healthy just make sure you believe in yourself because i knew a lot of my friends just gave up because they thought that they couldn't do it and i know for a fact i could they could do it because if I could do it, they could do it a hundred times better. Um, and I know you guys can do a hundred times better. So please don't give up. You'll be so surprised how strong the brain is. And you will also be very surprised how easy it is to understand something when you really want to know it and when you really want to learn it. Especially because now you've been doing all of this other stuff and this degree that you actually didn't want to do, you actually just want to get into medicine, and now you're studying for medicine, you're gonna you're gonna push, and I know you will. So good luck, and I will see you at med school. Hi, my name is Jan van Rooyen. Before medicine, I did a BSc Biology, majoring in Physiology, in animals, plants, and environmental sciences at Wits University. I wrote the WAPT on the 14th of September 2018. How I experienced the WAPT? Anatomy was the easiest, physiology was definitely the most difficult, and Mohamed was somewhere in between. So how I ended up preparing for the WAPT versus how I planned on preparing for worlds apart, as I had only left myself about a month to study. So I went to class during the day, Got home, started studying until 2, 3, even 4 o'clock in the morning. Go to bed, wake up the next day, go to class, and so the cycle continued. I managed to get through the WAP material twice, um, but I would definitely suggest starting well in advance. Um, 2, 3, even 4 months, um, so that you leave yourself enough time to go through everything at a decent pace, and that if there's something you don't understand, you still have time to figure it out. What I would suggest doing, start with MOLMED, simply because it's the smallest topic. So if you end up not having enough time, three chapters in MOLMED versus three chapters in physiology that you don't learn, um, it's going to make a big difference, much bigger in MOLMED than not learning three topics in physiology because it's so small. And then also there are summaries available. Just stick to the summary. Um, it gives you everything you need. Um, for anatomy, don't go into like tiny, tiny details, um, simply because the chances that you'll get asked that are slim to none. For physiology, I would advise leaving enough time to go through it adequately um, as it's the largest and also the most difficult. Make sure you understand everything, go through the objectives, um, make sure you can apply everything as well. And throughout the process, just remember, you're not aiming to get an 80%, you're aiming just to pass. So don't stress too much about the little things because they don't matter. As long as you know the big picture, you're sorted. I want this to try and reach as many people as possible that are writing the test so they can have access to those WhatsApp groups and uh, possibly join the tutorials. So uh, share the video, like the video, comment on it. Let's try and get it to as big an audience as possible. I will be posting it on Twitter and on the blog as well. If you know anybody that is currently trying to get into medicine and is interested in doing the WITS programs, link this video to them and uh, they can join those groups and hopefully get a lot of information that can help them along the way. Thanks for watching the video guys and good luck with your studying. I wish you all the best.